The Quest 3 is definitely clearer than the Quest 2, but why can it still be blurry? 30% better resolution, 25 pixels per degree versus 20, the better designed pancake lenses versus the Fresnel lenses. I'm gonna go over five reasons why the Quest 3 still might be blurry to you and tips to fix it, but ultimately is the improved clarity worth the upgrade? Let's focus in. Hey, howdy everybody, I'm Dr. Neil Guyman, Dr. Eye Guy, and for reason number one, I wanted to combine a lot of the obvious reasons together. I didn't want to brush over them because sometimes the simplest reasons can cause the biggest problems. So we definitely need to talk about the limitations of VR and specifically the lenses. The Fresnel lenses had a very small sweet spot and had rings of magnification which contributed to god rays and blurry vision. And now we have pancake lenses which makes the sweet spot way bigger and doesn't have the rings of magnification which pretty much eliminates most of the god rays. And these still have their downsides or limitations. Now, pancake lenses are made up of multiple lenses that are squished or pancaked together. And when light shoots through them, sometimes light can be reflected and bounced in between those lenses, which causes reflections or chromatic aberration, fraying, or light that gets refracted unevenly. Now they've done a good job at using anti-reflective coatings and designing them really well, but you can still notice some of this chromatic aberration out in the periphery of the lenses. So if you're playing VR, if you kind of look off to the periphery, you'll notice some blur and some light being frayed or refracted a little bit differently. And that's just the limitation of the lenses. Now a limitation to the display, it is better. 25 pixels per degree, better than the Quest 2, better than the Quest Pro, but the eye has the ability to see 60 pixels per degree. So there is a gap there. So you'll likely still notice some pixelation happening, especially if you're looking far off, fine detail, small detail, you still might see pixelation in lines. And so just understand that that's one of the limitations of the device. The other one you don't wanna brush over is to make sure that your lenses are clean. The smallest speck smudge can look huge when it's really close to your eyes. And you might notice it if you're looking around and maybe one area is just constantly blurry. That usually means there's something on the lens. So just make sure that you clean them with a dry, clean microfiber cloth approved for optical lenses. Clean them before and after you use them and you should be good. And the same thing goes for fogging of the lenses while you're playing. And I actually go over this in this video right here from the Quest 2, but a lot of those tips from that video apply here as well. So definitely check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Number two is making sure that the lenses are perfectly matched up with the pupils of your eyes. This includes the PD or pupillary distance measurement, vertical alignment, and the distance of the lenses from your eyes. Now the PD adjuster is way better in the Quest 3 compared to the Quest 2. It can range from 58 to 70, which is a little bit larger than the Quest 2, but it has the scrolling adjustment way better compared to whatever was in the Quest 2, the three different settings, 58, 63, and 68. This one has 58 and 70 and everything in between. So if your PD is 59, you can set it to 59. So it's way nicer to line it up. And then they also included distance adjusters, mainly if you're gonna be wearing glasses, you can adjust the distance so your lenses don't scratch the VR lenses. But you can also use that to your advantage to bring the lenses closer to your eyes as long as the eyelashes aren't touching on there. But that will help with the clarity, but play with it. Some people's eyes do better when it's a little bit further out, but at least you can adjust it now. Now with the Quest 3, the lenses are way more forgivable than the Quest 2. If your PD or alignment is off a little bit, you don't notice it that much, at least not as much as what was in the Quest 2. And so it is a little bit more forgivable. Sometimes they don't notice that it's off a little bit. And so that's just really nice. Now you can manually measure your PD. I actually go over that in this video. I'll put the link in the description. But more often these days, I recommend using an app to measure your PD. The main app I recommend is Glasses On. I've actually tested it on me, my friends, my family, and compared to what we can do in the clinic, actually measuring it with a pupillometer, and it was pretty close. It's actually surprisingly accurate. Another great one if you have an iPhone or iPad is iMeasure, also works really well. Now the main reason why this is so important is because you're trying to line up your pupil with the optical center 
of the lens. The optical center is where the light rays pass through the lens and don't need to be focused or bent or refracted. It has the clearest image going straight through the lens and that's what you're trying to line up your pupil with. If your PD is off, you can definitely experience blur, strain, headaches, and something called the prismatic effect. If you're not looking through the optical center, then you're looking through light rays that are being refracted or shifted a little bit and that can shift the image over and then your eye muscles have to compensate for that shift and that can definitely lead to eye strain, sometimes blur. And all this really does become crucial if you use VR prescription lens inserts, which we'll talk about later. Number three is something commonly known in the VR world and it's still an issue in the Quest 3 and that's something called divergence accommodation conflict. And this is a visual phenomenon that happens when the brain is receiving mismatching cues between your vergence and your accommodation. Your vergence is the inward and outward motion of your eyes or your eye muscles to keep an image single, not double. And then your accommodation is your focusing eye muscles to keep that image clear. And usually in the real world, these systems are linked. If you look far away, your eye muscles will diverge, your focusing muscles will relax, and you'll have a single clear image. And when you look at something close up, you'll converge and focus your eye muscles to make it a single and clear image. Now, what stinks is in VR, it's not like that. The focal distance where your eyes need to flex and focus is at one set plane. It doesn't move in VR, meaning you're not actually relaxing your focusing muscles to see clear or flexing your focusing muscles to see clear. Your muscles should be set at one point and that's usually about 1.2, 1.3 meters or four feet out in the distance. Now where they have the conflict is your eyes do need to change their vergence ranges. Meaning when they're looking at something afar in VR, they'll diverge and converge when they're looking at something up close. Now because in the real world these systems are linked, in VR, they have a conflict because your eye muscles want to point in and then automatically trigger your focusing muscles to flex. But when you flex, your vision may get blurry, you may see double vision, and so then you'll have this conflict and your eyes will fight each other. And a lot of times that's where cyber sickness and that nauseating feeling comes from when you're playing VR, and you can get double vision and blurry vision, and just won't be a fun experience. Now the tips are kind of tricky here because this is kind of a limitation to the VR device, but I do think it is helpful to do a few things. One would be to know what it actually feels like when you are focusing and flexing your eye muscles and converging and diverging your eye muscles. And one way you can do this in the real world, if you look at something very far away, maybe pick a tree outside, focus on that and then switch your focus to your finger right in front of your eyes. You'll notice that your eyes will have to converge, your focusing muscles will have to flex to make your thumb clear, and then switch the focus to far away to that tree again and back and forth. And you'll see the transition happen in real time and you'll notice that feeling that's happening in your eyes. And sometimes that can help when you know what that feeling is. When you're playing VR, you can kind of control it and know what your eyes need to do in order to clear up the image. Another tip is that you can close one eye. So if you're getting that blurry vision, double vision, you can close one eye and it'll eliminate that conflict. So you'll just have one eye that's doing the focusing and moving and so your eyes won't fight each other as much. Now the exciting thing, they are working on this in VR devices. They're coming up with eye tracking and very focal lenses to kind of help with that virgin's accommodation conflict. And so in the future, maybe in a few years, we might not even deal with this issue. This actually leads to number four of the possible causes for blurry vision, and that is dry eyes, or specifically something called keratitis. Now it has been studied and proven. When we look at screens, TVs, computer screens, phones, iPads, we blink a lot less, 60% less. And the less we blink, the less tears we have to protect the surface of our eyes. And if our eyes are exposed to the air too long, you can actually get inflammation and something called keratitis, little dry patches that form over the surface of the cornea right on the front of your eye. And dry eyes can actually be a pretty big issue. I don't want you to brush this one off because it really can cause blurry vision eye redness, inflammation, and just overall irritation while you're playing VR. When you don't have a lot of tears, the surface of your eyes can get hazy, blurry, 
when you get keratitis, you'll get those blotches right over the front of your eye, blurry. And I go over more in detail in this video right here. I definitely recommend it. Check out the link in the description. I go over exactly how dry eyes can cause blurry vision, something that a lot of people don't realize. And if anything, I would say this is probably one of the top reasons why I recommend taking breaks every 20 minutes, 30 minutes when you're playing VR. I know that's really difficult, but if you can take a break every 20 to 30 minutes, maybe put in some artificial tears, make sure that you're blinking and recoding the surface of your eyes, not only will your eyes be more healthy, but your vision will be clearer, especially when you're playing VR. Now, before we get to number five, do I think it's worth the upgrade to the Quest 3 from the Quest 2? Now, I am biased. Being an eye doctor, I kind of notice optics and clarity and improvements that way and I look out in the periphery and the fringes of things and the Quest 3 is definitely leaps and bounds clearer than the Quest 2 in my eyes. So if you're someone that's continually annoyed maybe by the God rays, the small sweet spot, blurry vision, maybe the PDs don't match your PD, then I would upgrade in a heartbeat. Number five, and this might be one of those that might seem obvious, but you may need to be wearing your glasses. Now, like I said before, the focal distance in VR in the Quest 3 is in the distance. And this might be a little bit confusing because a lot of times we're thinking, hey, the lenses are an inch from my eyes, and so my eyes need to focus on something that close but the lenses in VR actually push the focal distance out farther away. And so you're actually focusing on something out in the distance and not up close. So here is a general rule. At 1.2, 1.3 meters or four feet out, if you wear glasses in real life to make that clearer, more comfortable, then you will want to wear glasses in VR. Now, if you actually want to be serious and test this out, I'll put a downloadable eye chart in the description that's calibrated for five feet, so pretty close to that four feet mark. You can print it out, hang it on your wall, take your glasses contacts off, and see if it's blurry around that 2020 line. If it's blurry, then likely your VR is going to be blurry, and you'll want to wear your glasses and contact lenses. And if you don't know if you need to wear glasses, you definitely want to get your eyes checked. It's definitely time. But yeah, you can download this, put it up five feet away, and just see if it's blurry. If it's looking blurry, that might be a good indication that it's time to go to the eye doctor. Now, wearing glasses in the Quest 3 is nicer because it has that spacer, less chance of actually scratching the lenses. I still like wearing contact lenses, so you don't have to deal with the glasses in there. But if your eyes are more dry, then VR prescription lens inserts is also an option and very nice as long as you get the PD correctly. Now, I actually have reached out to Meta asking, hey, what's your focal distance in the Quest 3? And they told me it's not public information, at least not yet. Once I find it out, I'll put it in the description below, but I'm assuming it's really close to the Quest 2, which was that 1.2, 1.3 meters, four feet out. And in my testing, it seems to be about right. And if you're wondering, do I wear my distance prescription or my reading prescription, wear your distance prescription. Meta recommends using your distance prescription, so distance glasses, or if you're ordering VR prescription lens inserts, use your distance prescription. Speaking of VR prescription lens inserts, I have a lineup that I'm testing out right now, and I'll do a comparison review video, and I'll put it right here when it's ready. In the meantime, check out my VR playlist right here. I go over VR and eyes, blurry vision, is it bad for your eyes? I'm Dr. Neil Guyman, Dr. Eye Guy. Join me in VR and stay focused.